showtime. Welcome back to Habeas Corpses, all you boils and ghouls, to another corpses something or other, whatever you say. <laughs> Turn me back on, Marcus. <laughs> How does it feel to have your job stolen? Welcome back, all you boils and ghouls and corpses crew, to another exciting episode of Habeas Corpses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Today we're here to talk about the extraordinarily cute John Cusack. You think John Cusack's cute? He He is. His nose is adorable. An adorable nose. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. That's awesome. So we're talking about John Cusack in his sad mode, his angry mode, his devilish mode, his happy mode. No, that's the cute. And his his cute mode. Uh huh. And is this depression the rain? It's rain. Cloud. It's literal rain. It's <laughs> 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 I, I, I guess that happens in this movie a lot. Um, I'm clever. I you think I'm are funny. Clever. So but if you haven't seen this movie, it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, you don't get what's going on if you haven't seen this movie. And the movie is not entitled John Cusack. But before we get to that, it should be. Um, I want to talk real quickly about COVID-19. We haven't talked about COVID-19 in quite a while on one of our episodes. Okay, Ben Shapiro, let's hear it. Do you, No, this isn't a Ben Shapiro question or anything. Do you think eventually? I mean, eventually. No. We, uh, <laughs> Eventually, we're all going to be exposed to the virus if we haven't already. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we've all been all exposed. been exposed. I know me and you have. Do you? First off, are you going to take this booster shot that is now available to you due to the job that you partake? In? I do not feel comfortable taking the booster shot. So you're not going to take it. You're because how many more fucking boosters am I going to need? Well, if it's the if it's the Pfizer or Moderna, probably one every six months. And I don't think like. that that sounds very healthy. You don't want to keep pumping Just that pump stuff that into, into me. Veins. No thanks. I totally agree. I think I will also not be taking the vaccine. I think I'll just be exercising and eating healthy. Sorry, it's Christmas time and I'm not eating great right now. But and taking my vitamins. Okay, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but shout yeah. out to my uncle Leroy who said it's all about vitamin D and zinc. Vitamin D and zinc. Mm-hmm. Well, that there. I mean, there are a bunch of vitamins you should be taking yeah. in order to boost your like immune general, system. not even just like COVID immunity, just like general. I mean, yeah, your immune system in general could use vitamin C, zinc, D, all of that fun stuff. So the next thing, magnesium I'm ask you citrate. Is you're basically okay with getting covid at some time then because they say that the i don't know like what's my option like pump me full of something that may give me cancer eventually because it's like floating to different parts of our bodies that it shouldn't be or or take something that may cause permanent respiratory damage i don't know neither option seems great (laughs) or move out to the countryside start a homestead and live alone on a piece of land with a Ding, ding 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 i think i'll go with that option You've won yourself a new homestead. Show like them what they get. Uh, what well, show was that? That they it's Wheel of, uh, Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. They also did it in um. I think the Price is Right always gave her away like Price is Right was like furniture sets and stuff, wasn't it? I don't like, know. I didn't watch either of those. You didn't watch kid. the Price is Right as a kid. <laughs> that was like '90s kid. If you stayed home sick, you were growing up. Oh no no no! I turned on the Sci Fi Channel. Well, I, you're <laughs> late '90s. So. I didn't have satellite TV at that time. I specifically so was, remember being was. like, I do not want to watch daytime <laughs> game shows. But as an adult, I'm like, daytime game shows? Yeah, Hello. That, that's, all, that's all it was. It was Judge Judy, um, The Price is Right. What was his name? Bob. Bob, Bob Barker. Yeah. He's in and uh, then, uh, that Sesame one movie Street. With Adam Sesame Miller. Street was a huge one that was on. So... So it's still on. You've come to the conclusion that you're going to get COVID at some time. Because I know so many people that have been vaccinated that are getting breakthrough cases right now. We had one at work where he was vaccinated and had COVID before, and he tested for positive for COVID again. But I was talking to him, and he was like, I don't think I had COVID. I think the test was just screwed up because my wife did not have COVID. Charles. Charles Lee Horse. Charlie. He's going those are after not your st- toys. Hey. <laughs> evil slashy and uh He's Sam. like, are those for me? <laughs> um, sorry, what were you saying? So, I was worried about him chewing on some very expensive stuff. <laughs> no, I was just I was just saying that um 
the fact is that even with the vaccine, you're pretty much going to get this virus after repeated. I don't. Exposures. Yeah, I don't think how I don't think it matters how many fucking uh, boosters you take. You're yeah, eventually still probably get you're it. probably going to get it. Yeah. Or if you keep getting boosters, you're going to end up looking like the what the thing from like? Basket Case. Yeah. He's looking at the ghost because I swear to God. Do you see him? The other day. <laughs> the other day we had fallen asleep. It's your shadow, man. He sees your shadow and he's like, <laughs> that's like the shadow person that comes in the room every day Ooh. or every night. His but dog is not the smartest dog. We were we put a fan in our room, a little box fan, and I'm sure with vibration it moves around slowly on the ground. But it had moved. It has never done it before, and we've been using it for years. And it literally, I set it up by the dog kennel, and it must have moved. That was like three feet. Yeah, because you know, you wouldn't have noticed it had it. And I was like, "What in the hell?" I'm, I'm, I'm very skeptical on spirits, ghosts, and all that stuff. And skeptical meaning like I maybe there's a one percent chance that my brain, uh actually believes there's ghosts but it's going up to like 1.5 now also, there are some strange things happening in our um, house lately so that happened and then vader was just like i thought he was growling at charlie which he does often because charlie's annoying and he was him. not and he was just growling at the wall i was like dude what are you doing charlie why are you <laughs> pissing off and i walked in and charlie was just like chilling with a toy on the bed like he's just minding his out. own business and then vader was like growling at the wall and i was like that's not an that's a charlie behavior charlie would do that kind of shit that's not a vader behavior <laughs> and i was like it's that damn courteous ghost it is a courteous ghost it's not it a mean ghost it's a it's courteous very not ghost. yeah if if you're listening ghost we like you we don't we don't hate you everything starts flickering okay we got it <laughs> oh um so we haven't gotten around to watching much in the way of horror. You've been binging The Walking Dead lately. Yes. Because um, you luckily got Friday off of work. So I think that's all you did all Friday. I fucking got my oil changed. God damn it, Marcus. You, you I was did, at Walmart you did for two hours. <laughs> it was awful. Um, that is when I did most of the day. Not all of the day. But, but we did watch last week in a movie that I put on that I used to enjoy and now I've had a a very um very a change of opinion on the movie. I used to like it when it first came out and now Marcus is a snob now. No, I'm not a snob. It just didn't stand the test of time. And watching it again, I don't know if it's the format we watched it in, but it was very you know that soap opera look? It when was not filmed. soap opera y at all. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Oh, yes, it was. It was it was not good. And then who else isn't? So we got John Cusack. Amanda Pete. That's the lady that you said doesn't act in anything anymore. I haven't seen her in anything in a long time. Um, what's his name? Mm, uh, with the teeth. Oh, Ray Liotta's in it. Yeah, Ray Liotta and He's not the guy with the teeth. No, uh, uh his father is in is a big time movie oh, star his name john wayne gacy's coming to mind gary Busey. Gary jake Busey. Busey. Yeah, jake Busey. is there we it. go that was a weird turn of <laughs> had to figure it out that way <laughs> and a few other actors actors uh bugsy from a perfect storm i don't know what the actor's name is he plays the dude that's kind of the hotel motel caretaker and then the thingy asshole doctor from scrubs don't know you haven't seen scrubs i haven't what? either i just know he's the red-headed doctor who's kind of a douche but we are talking about the crime thriller slash horror supernatural, a little bit weird film identity. It's not supernatural. That's a little bit of a supernatural element to it. Mm -hmm. Small. Small amount. You don't think so? No. Not at all? No. Well, it tricks you into thinking it is, but it's not. It's one of your classic 90s puzzle films. Yeah, kind of like uh, the th game. The thriller puzzle, puzzle films. The game can fuck itself. <laughs> you don't like that one? No. That was a waste of our goddamn lives. Yeah, the, the, the game is a pretty... Uh, but it's a puzzle film. That's what I'm getting at. It's a 90s puzzle film. Don't even bring that up again. Well, <laughs> then name another puzzle film from the 90s. Um, I'm going to go back to my usual 1990s reference. Which, Kiss the Girls. Which is? 
kid. That's not a puzzle film. Yes, it is. When I talk about puzzle films, it's like you're trying to put the pieces together of a movie. Yeah, like the game and identity. Let's not talk about the game. <laughs> Kiss the Girls is an appropriate answer. I don't even think. Along came a spider. I don't even think. I want to see what year uh, identity was filmed. I think it was 2002. Let's see. Um, I have a fun fact for you. I have a couple of them. From identity or are we talking about? Uh, John Cusack. 2003. So what's the what's John Cusack? He's appeared in two movies as a limo driver. The two thousand he in two thousand twelve and Identity, and they both co-starred Amanda Peet. What um, was the other film? The movie two thousand twelve. Oh, is she the mom in that film? Yeah, I think so. Wow, but I didn't connect that. And then um, also, fun fact as well. He was in a movie when he was 16. Can't remember what it was called because I've never seen it. But um, he got emancipated from his parents so he could be the star in the film. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So that he didn't have to have his parent on set. Okay. Because the director didn't want his parents on the set. Oh, so they're like, hey, we got a buttload of cash here. Your parents are probably going to get a little bit of this money and less. You can go get emancipated. Mm -hmm. And then your parents are off the set. You're going to get all the cash. He still has a good relationship with his parents. He started some films with his dad. Did you see Britney Spears just got freed? Yes, he actually dated Britney Spears. Wow, I did not know that about But her conservatorship has officially ended. It is done. She... She's... It's over with. Yep, she... Everything is done. Yeah. Have you seen some of her fucking wild posts online lately? She is like, not been holding back. (laughs) About about her life for the past fifteen years, she's been spilling all the tea. She hasn't been allowed to post anything she's posted online during the conservatorship. Had to be like approved. So what happens? Okay, so she has a phone, she has a Facebook, an Instagram, whatever, a mm-hmm. TikTok. She, what happens if she posted something without getting her father's approval? I don't know. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. It's like people go against their probation officers. All the time. So he was, quote, unquote, in charge of her financial affairs, her... She, who she dated, everything. Like... If, but what I'm saying is, like, she if she would have went... to go to Starbucks. If she would have went against that, what, they throw her in a jail or a mental facility or... Yeah, hmm. I think so. That's strange. But now she's um, They free. could take away... If she, like, went against the rules, I know they could take away her children completely. I did not even know Britney Spears had children. That is actually why she signed on to the conservatorship is because they were threatening to take away custody unless she did it. Her, and her she kids was must not, be 18 now. They're teenagers hmm. um, with KFID. <laughs> um, with KFID? K Federline. Who's that? Some really annoying white guy from the early 2000s. <laughs> he went by KFID. Is he still around? I don't think so. Why, <laughs> if he was, would you you would probably recognize his name a little more? Yeah, no, I don't recognize any it at all. who's Magoo's. She that's why she signed on to it is because they were threatening to take away custody, and then ever since it's been a fucking mistake. Just, just, just annoying. Because they got control over everything from that. Like if she didn't want to perform, she could get in trouble, not see your kids. Like there was like one instance where she had a fever, and they made her perform at her Las Vegas show anyway. Mm. Like she was mourning like an over 100 degree fever. She's like on stage, I have COVID. Get up there and perform. We need the cash. Pretty much. Mm. Yeah. But she's free. She is free. Now let's get back to. <laughs> we totally, you started it. I, you started no, it. I did. I did. I did the seg, or not Not even the segue. What do you call it? I digressed from the movie we're talking about, which oh, wait. is. We need to talk about our a, experience at dinner a, last night. Okay, we're. We're once again digressing to... You just told me yesterday that you like episodes that don't even have a subject where we just bullshit. And here we are doing exactly what you like. And you're being me, who's irritated and is trying to go back (laughs) to the subject. I totally agree. I love just the bullshit episodes. That's how You didn't even want to talk about this one. And now you're like desperately wanting to... I did not want to talk about identity. But you were like, this is the film we're watching. This is what we're doing the episode on. But this kind of fits in because I feel like we had every identity in that freaking <laughs> diner and it was every possible identity that was a bad identity. Like we, so we went to eat last night at a local restaurant called Verges. It's just a hole in the wall diner. You, you know? can get a lot of food for a very small amount of money and it's delish. Exactly. I think there's like 
maybe like 10 locations statewide. I don't even know if there's that many. I think there is. There's one in Taylorsville, one in West Valley. That one's not there anymore. Oh, it's gone? I thought they just remodeled it. She gone. Wow. There's one in uh, Twilla. Basically two in Twilla. You have the one that sits in the Twilla city limits. And and then then the one past uh, Stockton Pennies, which is Pennies, but I think it's Burgess. I think it's... It's like the food is exactly the I same. think it's owned by the same people, same but people. they don't want to change the name because okay, yeah. of its history. Exactly. But um, we're sitting in this diner. Now, picture the diner when... Picture the it's diner genius. from It's um, one of those Legion. old... Yeah. I felt like we were in the movie Legion. There's people there. We go in, sit wherever you like, and from the moment we're in there, I'm like, we shouldn't have come in here. Something it <laughs> feels off, and we've been in there before, but tonight was like everybody that lives under a rock crawled out underneath their rock and was like, "I'm going to." Virgin. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> we had <laughs> your face. You were like, "What the hell?" We had the um the typical cup. angry, pissed off. At everything, Trump, Republican, extremely right wing uh, couple. They were there. They didn't there. look like they'd smiled in years. No, I'm not talking about that couple. This was oh. the older couple that was sitting kitty corner. Oh. Now they, they ate. And as soon as I sat down, the guy just gave me this glare. It's like, Oh, please, please don't do that. That's really loud in my ears. What you doing in here, boy? <laughs> please stop. Then. Eight in his wife. As, as we're Burrito. sitting down. That, that was like the only people there that was that were awkward at this time. I mean, the other people were like. And then this man came in who kept staring at me, but he your back was to him, so you couldn't see. But it, and I we s- kept making eye contact. <laughs> I would just feel like someone was staring at me and it would be him and then he wouldn't look away. Usually when you like are staring at someone and they look at you, you're like, oh, fuck. He would just like kept staring. Literally picture that uh, the painting or the photograph American Gothic, I think Mm -hmm. is what it was called. The the farmer and his wife sitting out there at the pitchfork. But picture the man having a much bigger nose and the world's tiniest mouth. And the biggest droopiest cheeks ever. And he was just like, and he'd never smiled once yes, in his life, like no emotion in this guy. And I, it's, I think, I always think it's weird when couples go out to dinner and they're by themselves and they sit on the same side of the table, and then there's nobody on the other side of the table. Yeah, I noticed that when they came in, they sat on the same. I think it was side so the they table. didn't have to look at each other. I think so too. <laughs> he was like, I don't want to look at your stupid face. And she was like, I don't want to look at your fucking. Yeah, they they your both, neck. <laughs> they both that look fat neck. So unhappy, and then the old also old like Trumper people. Hold on, I believe hold the on. guy had a Trump hat on. They go to leave, and I'm I've just started to notice how restaurants clean, and I don't I don't know if they spray disinfectant on this cloth or whatever but i'm guessing it's just water warm um, water. when i worked at zupa's that was like a cleaning solution in that bucket with that they that okay. on that cloth okay i then, don't know if that's how it is at, at Burgess, Burgess, but at zupa's but it was a cleaning solution <laughs> and it I, made my hands itchy did it mm-hmm. so they they wiped down the table and the next customer comes in <clears throat> <clears throat> no he wasn't gonna th- it was like no. It was like this. It was like this. <coughs> so he sits down <coughs> from the minute he sits down, and this is a younger kid, all alone. He's probably like twenty three, twenty four. Mm-hmm. Um, shaking his leg. Dude, yeah, could not stand still. <coughs> his legs are shaking. <coughs> he got this nervous cough or nervous grunt. And I don't do well with sounds, so you, I was like... So here's the thing, is <laughs> you got to stare at the American Gothic people, and I got to stare at him. And I had the other man staring at me. <laughs> Which one? The man you never saw. The big fat guy? No, the, huge, the guy in the guy? corner. You never saw the man in the corner in the work shirt. He stared at me the whole day. <laughs> oh, I seen one guy that was like very, very large. No, it wasn't. I didn't see that person. You didn't see the big, large guy? 
everyone in there was large. And I'm not saying I'm skinny by any means, but it was like everyone in there was like, we all need to scale back our portions, every one of us, because we're all big in here. All of us should <laughs> not be here tonight. Yeah, no we kidding. should all go home and eat salad. <laughs> so I'm not picking on this man for being fat. That's just, and I guess I can't even say the large man because everyone in there was pretty large, except our nervous tick guy. And Ooh. Marcus was like, I think he's going to shoot us all. I <laughs> was like, oh, the great. One time I don't have my concealed carry on me. This guy's in here because he was he just looked like one of those. I don't know. And he kept looking around and he's bouncing his leg up and down. And then and then he's coughing and then he starts blowing his nose. Every like three minutes blowing his nose and picking it with like. <gasps> and so then. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, you didn't, that's why I was like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. I need to get out of here. I was getting so irritated because I'm trying to eat and I keep looking over and he's like, and like boogers are like coming out of his nose on the napkin. And I'm just like, Ugh. who raises some of these people? And I who raises these people? I literally at this time look back at the American Gothic dude. Cause I'm like, I want to be like, please tell me I'm not the only one that's seeing this and wants this guy to just leave or wants to get up and leave. And I look back at him and he's looking forward at this guy, but like directly through him. And then he looks at me. Then he looks back at the guy. While his wife is staring out the window. Yeah. Then he looks back at longing me. Longing for her lover from the and past. I, all I want him to do is give <laughs> me like an acknowledgement of like, yeah, he's weird, but he doesn't. And I'm like, okay, I need to get the fuck out of here. And then, then we get the normal people that come in. They were very nice. Yes. It was a um, a brother, I believe, and his um, special needs sister. They were probably in their late 40s. She was older than that. Maybe 50s. She was a little older than him. Yeah. Real, real cute. They were like just sitting there looking at pictures of their cat together. Yeah. It was sweet. All that. Totally fine. And Very tender. It was nice. Mm-hmm. And you usually, and I, I got the feeling when she came in, because she was kind of talking that the one couple was kind of like a little irritated. They were like, mm, I don't like this girl. Mm. Yeah. Like, this. And I wanted to like turn around and slap them and be like, they're fine. It's this you guy people. and you people are driving me nuts. And then finally, I just couldn't take it anymore. I got the fuck out of there. I had to go. But guess who had <laughs> the keys in her pocket? You, but I went outside. Well, I went out to the like little foyer area. Where there's like newspapers. It was just gross. And I totally thought, totally thought we were just going to start hearing gunfire come from that guy. Because he was just. I was like, well, I guess if this is my last meal, they per- kicked, <laughs> cooked the ba- bacon perfectly. So The food was great. The service was great. The guests were weird. The three couples that I had seen were just weird. I wonder they what they're sitting, sitting right at their house saying about us right now. Uh, they probably that weird fucking little freaking dude with his colored hair. Ugh. You were wearing a hat. They didn't even know. Yeah. They were like, that. those motherfuckers with the gauges. Something. She ate those fries so slow. <laughs> you were. I did it and on purpose to bug you. You were like picking up crumbs with your fry by like there was a little piece of cheese and a little and piece I'm of bacon here, and i wanted the piece of and bacon like, and cheese on my fry and i'm like i want the fuck out of here i want to savoring here my food <laughs> and God, I, I didn't go let's go because <laughs> booger dude was driving me well nuts. i, I couldn't see I booger ate. dude i was like i gotta get the fuck out of here i was paying for dinner and i was going to get my money's worth and ever since we looked didn't we look at that meme together that was like every fork has been in a mouth like this i refuse to use utensils now at fucking restaurants I well can't do it. i don't have an option because i can't have gluten no so. bring the little fork i buy you <laughs> you know what that's a good idea i keep it in my bag for emergencies yeah and just wash it off later i cannot do that's it why anymore. it's in a ziploc it's so just that so it gross go in a ziploc to be washed there you go um but so identity is the film we're talking about okay back to john cusack it's a it's it's a film with an interesting premise but the spook factor and all that, what I thought used to be really good after a second watch, I was like, this is so I didn't so find it bad. spooky at all. But there was, well, exactly, because it's bad. I didn't think it meant was meant to be spooky. No? No. 
I think it was meant to be like a crime film. I don't know. What just came out of your throat? My neck made a noise. <laughs> I don't know why. It wasn't a burp, but it came from your, here. Your little thing that lives in there was like, I disagree. <laughs> I, I, I agree with Marcus. It was meant to be spooky. I didn't think it was meant Whatever, to be spooky. Whatever. The environment, everything. But it was. it did not do a good job at being spooky. Because I don't think it was supposed to. The basic premise of the film is it's a back and forth story in two different timelines. And what is happening is there's a murderer and he's going to be put to death in 24 hours. Yes. And you don't see him for most of the movie. But you're led to believe it is the criminal that is at the motel with all these people. But... If you've ever seen any movie ever, the most obvious reason or the most obvious answer is usually not the answer. Like in one of those kinds of films, they want you to really think. So they're not just going to put it on a platter for you. Yeah. So like you're trying to figure out, okay, how is this related? It doesn't really make sense how it's related because you're getting kind of like two stories. Plus you're getting every individual person's like. Kind of you get like not their st- – a little bit of their story. Like you get a little bit of their background, but you're also gauging kind of their personality because you're trying to figure out who the real bad guy is because it's making you think like maybe it's a, it's an escaped person. Maybe it's actually not this criminal. Maybe it's – maybe one of them is evil. Like Well, because they set it up as everyone is getting stranded at this motel. Because of the weather. John Cusack's kind of our main character that we follow through mm-hmm. with. There's no like lead lead character, but we follow him. Him and Amanda Pete are like the most most on screen. screen times. And everyone's stranded at this motel. Um Ray Liotta sh- Ray Liotta shows up as a police officer, correctional officer, um, transporting a prisoner Mm -hmm. who is played by Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. um, No. Jake Busey. (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) And that's who we initially think is killing everyone because he escapes from his handcuffs. That's what they want you to think. Who handcuffs a known killer to a toilet? Ray Liotta, obviously. Yeah, and obviously I've stayed at every shitty motel. We've been at plenty of them, and trust me, the plumbing is not very secure in these areas. Well, when you're in a pinch, Marcus, (laughs) okay, what do you want him to do? Handcuff him (laughs) to the doorknob? (laughs) Keep your eyes on him. Just keep him handcuffed in the car, maybe, with the, the... Doors locked? I don't know. But regardless, John Cusack has been driving this very annoying film star around. Hits. She reminded me of that lady that your dad dated. Yes. I'm not going to shout out her name, but it was her. She had been an actress. 100%. And once she gets her head cut off, I was like. Oh, yeah. She's (laughs) she's the first to go. But but, um, they hit one of the... uh, other get not guests but one of the other characters yeah. on the road a mother and so you're playing a nice lady yeah and you're playing a guessing game because people start getting killed and they're the room keys are being left with them which leads you to believe that there's something supernatural about it because it's like a countdown mm-hmm. nine eight seven six now the thing that kind of confuses me still to this day is did he uh did the person assume the identities of these individuals after he killed them or were the victims that the so-called victims here's what's happening he's killing them off Mm -hmm. because whoever is left is supposed to be the only personality that remains and as long as it's not the murderous personality they're not going to put him to death so he has to do this weird picking them off one by one thing in his brain so that he can live so we're but not. He, he, just, he assumes those personalities in his regular day-to-day life. He just switches between them. But the, the therapist is like, nope, only one can stay, and it has to be the one that's not a killer. Okay, so we're not. Which is um, literally, just so everybody knows, not how that works. 
but we're not <laughs> reenacting what the the crime of what's actually going what he's being charged with isn't a reenactment right no it's every this they're, whole they, story they is are just in his head they are discussing a murder that took place at a motel but it's not that murder because okay. it shows you like little snippets of photos mm-hmm. at the beginning and i don't know if you caught it it was all hookers Oh, like, really? Yeah, they were all, it was like, a. for my understanding, was it looked like they were all, like, by the hour in this hotel, and he just went through and picked those off. Oh, okay. Because he was, hated m- hookers. And, um, yeah. Oh, that's that's right, because he says that a few times. Um, something like. Yeah, so his personality split off. Some, something like that. Yeah, his personality split off into the ten different personalities. Which is what you're seeing, and they're picking them off one by one because only one can remain at the end. Gotcha. And which the, is we just spoiled the twist. The twist is is that we're in somebody's brain. Surprise. <laughs> well, I, yeah, but there is no twist because it's. I mean, come on. We there's no. Oh, don't spoil it. This movie was made in 2003. But the interesting that would have been a spoiler for me because well, I hadn't seen it. You haven't seen a lot of films I've come to find out. I was just asking you if you had seen Reanimator, and you haven't seen Reanimator. No. So I'll put in the, in the description that there is spoilers on this episode. Okay. But the interesting, the, the biggest twist is you find out the personality that is actually the killer is the kid in the... Little Timothy York. Yes, and he looks just like uh, the Omen Boy to me. Looks like every annoying fucking kid in Walmart to me. Like cereal bowl hair. Oh, God. Don't do that. That please. voice. <laughs> uh, oof. Sometimes parents shouldn't bring their children places. Agreed. 100%. Now, is you don't know a ton about psychology or anything. Um, neither do I. But is there any sort of accuracy to bringing out those personalities? I don't know. Like I do not or know. This... I've listened to one podcast, but it was somebody's perspective of their experience. And like she didn't even really talk about her personalities per se. She talked about what kind of caused her to get to that point. So you can the... develop multiple personalities over your lifetime. Yes. So but it's they... not something you're born with? No. It's a it's okay, so it's called dissociate dissociative identity disorder, mm. but it's commonly called multiple personalities. But it's dissociative because it usually develops from experiencing a trauma where you disassociated and you did it so frequently. Um, this is my understanding. Don't come for me, people. I'm not a doctor. Nope. That would make sense. Why the boy? Those, yeah, that those personalities that. develop. So like. So his original personality is him as a boy, and he's made these other. Yeah. Because that makes sense that he. And like the whore. Yep. <laughs> as described yeah. in the film, of yeah, Pete the yeah, Hooker, exactly. would be his mother. Yeah. Well, his mother is the one instilling that in his head that you, yeah. yeah. Like the one podcast I listened to, it was really rough to listen to because she went into great detail of her trauma and it was really, really horrendous. And one of the like personalities that will literally come out, she'll like basically black out. She'll lose time for a couple days Mm -hmm. and she'll wake up and she'll know who it was because like there's literally always like writing left behind and it's a person that actually abused. It's one of the many, 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 many people that had actually abused her. And um, even though it wasn't the closest person to her and it wasn't even the person who abused her the most, it was just like this really outstanding thing that was different from the others. And so it kind of made an impact on her. And it was really yeah. it was really awful and disgusting. And that's about all I know about it. Have you ever met anyone with like multiple personalities in your day to day? Absolutely not. It's no. super uncommon, but I can tell you that I've met it's lots super of people uncommon. who pretend that they have That's it. That's what I was just about to say. Probably, I'm not a psychiatrist, <laughs> don't quote me. I, I would guess it was more of an uncommon um, diagnosis, but a lot of people have said it. I've known people, and it's usually people that I've encountered who are fucking weird. Or just in my younger years in high school, I can't count how many people in high school girls were like, who really I have multiple attention. Pers- yes, <laughs> and then I grow up and see them now. I'm like, no, you don't. You, girls with dad you like issues. to use that for an excuse of your bad behavior. You weren't oh, getting the attention you needed, so you were doing something that 
got you attention and it wasn't positive attention, but it got someone to look at you and that's what you were seeking. No, no, this would be I like someone really. treating someone like shit. I remember for a particular girl in high school who treated everyone badly. Like she would treat people really good in circles, but then treat people really bad. Oh, okay. And her excuse was always, oh, if I treat you badly, that's just my multiple personality disorder. It's like, no, it's not. You're just an asshole. I still think that's a little bit of an it because if that's your reason, you are seeking some sort of attention. I well, I personally think maybe. I mean, I don't know. I don't but know. I know this. The girls I went to school with that always claimed it. It was never boys. I never ever 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 heard a boy claim this. I always heard girls claim it, and it was always like they would totally like act out in different personalities, and it was so fake. And I was like, you you have a lot of you have a lot of issues, don't you? I sure hope that's our cat. <laughs> Sure hope that's what's happening up there. I think it's the cat up there. Bouncing around. <laughs> What's our ghost? I think he got the zoomies. One of the two. Anyway. But that's okay. Maybe it's him and the ghost. Maybe they're having a jolly good time up there. <laughs> The ghost is feeding him. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Do-do-do-do>. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's my very limited understanding. I don't know much about it. What I do know is that I think people like to use it as an excuse to be weird. I think a lot of people, and I'm not discounting people with mental health problems, but I do think people like to um, latch on to mental health problems. And I think this is a huge problem. You might have something wrong with you mentally, like depression, anxiety, something that's diagnosable, but don't diagnose yourself. Go get it clinically diagnosed so you can treat it the proper way. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people will sit there and say, I have this. And you're like, well, how do you know? I just know I've had it my whole life. Like, have you ever talked to a psychiatrist? Have you ever went to a doctor and talked about it? No, but I know I have it. It's like, no, go seek proper treatment for it. Don't just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't self-diagnose, I guess is what I'm saying. But sometimes, who knows? Doctors don't even, I mean, my doctor diagnosed me with what general anxiety disorder, but did he really diagnose me or did he just say, hmm? Let's put this in your file. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. The world's fucked up. <laughs> and everybody have a good night. <laughs> On that note, we're done here. <laughs> um, but I don't think identity is streaming anywhere that I know of. It might be on Tubi. Oh, give it a goo. Give it a goo, Glacier. I thought give we it watched it on the Netflix. Uh, no. We, I, own, we it? own it. Yeah. I put it in. The DVD player, I believe. Do, I'm almost do, positive. Do. I put it's it on the, the Netflix. Is it? Maybe we did watch it on the Netflix. I thought we did. That's weird. We're, we were in Best Buy today, and it's so odd because I used to love to buy movies and actually have the physical copies. And now I'm in a mode of my life to where I'm like, I don't like clutter. So one thing I don't need any of is CDs. DVDs, Blu-rays, any of that stuff. The only time you would uh, want a movie is if it's something that's really hard to find and it's never streaming. Yeah. Like Titanic, which is now on Netflix. Super glad that I got that for you last Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think we have anything else to talk about. Um, no. That's kind of sad. Oh, man. Hasn't been an exciting week. There's a lot to look forward to. Marcus is going to take me on the Polar Express. He said so himself today. Yeah, I'll take you on the Polar Express for your Christmas present. People are like, is that what you're going to go for for Marcus? (laughs) (laughs) Everyone have a lovely night. Go check out Identity, and we'll see y'all later. (laughs) 